Hey, it's now on the air. So, should be good. Um, no one's here right now, but doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, we're going to give it like, oh, one more minute. Give people a chance to show up. Cool, so um, a couple quick disclaimers. Uh, you may hear my cat wandering around and meowing, because that's what she does. Um, other than that, uh, let me grab my notes, and we can get started. Where are my notes? Notes, 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 notes. Uh, my Google Drive, class lessons, level design, PowerPoint files, and there we go. Oh, come on, notes. Stop there. Excellent. Cool. So, starting things off, this is a quick uh, recap and rebroadcast of the uh, lesson that I gave this past Tuesday in my Level Design 1 class. Uh, this is on the design process. So, Come on, there it is. Uh, quick disclaimer, the vocabulary, terminology, all the little things I use in this are words that I use on a daily basis in class and at work, but are not really official terminology. No one really has a, here's the dictionary of terms that every designer must know. But uh, these words make really good starting points in conversation, and they have uh, the foundational elements of like a shared terminology. Uh, you can start talking to people about these and they'll have a general idea of what you're talking about. But uh, if your company, school, team, group of friends want to use some different words for these same concepts, please, by all means, use those rather than this one. Um, so first, what is this design process? Well, overall, the design process is a life cycle for game design. Uh, and it contains four basic steps. Um, you start off with a concept. You then take that concept, move to a prototype. You develop that prototype. And once that, that prototype is awesome enough and fun to play, you move on to full production. And while you're, produ while you're in production and by the end of production, you start jumping into polish. So uh, with those four steps, we're going to take each of these and break them down into their component ideas and in, in what actually in, is involved in each of these steps. Come on, there we go. So starting with a concept. Um, most people start off in game development like, oh, I want to be a designer. Oh, that's cool. I have a really cool game idea. That's nice. Yeah, that isn't worth uh, much of anything. Um, and I, a game idea is everyone has some of those. Everyone has their, their, ooh, this would be the most excellent game ever if only people would just take what's in my brain and develop it exactly the way I think it should be made. Um, the whole idea, the, the whole process of the concept section is to take that idea that's in your head and actually make it into something that's worthwhile. Turning it into an actual uh, written down documentation for your uh, idea and then drawing out the layouts, the visuals that, asso that are associated with that. Um, so, uh, what is in this concept? The, the two sections 
two parts of this of concept that we're going to be talking about is the paper concept and the map layout. Uh, the formats for these are unique for each group of people, and uh, what makes them all, what ties it all together is the information that's being shown. It needs to be expressive, it needs to be informative, it needs to show whoever's watching it, especially you, the person who made it, what you're thinking about, what your idea is about in, an, in enough depth to act as uh, guidelines during ac uh, prototype and production in later phases. Now, some of you may have heard of things like this uh, called design documents, but what we're making are not design documents. Uh, the formal declaration of what a design document is is an all-encompassing Bible for a game. It contains everything about that game. It contains uh, information not only about the gameplay and the levels and uh, the environments, but it can play, contains precise documentation on how the UI should be laid out. What's the sound going to be like? What's the code format for here? What are, what are the inputs that are coming in? What does the A button do? What does the B button do? Um, what is the mouse used for? All of this information is dumped into a design document, and those things are huge. Um, the paper concept map layouts that we're going to be discussing here are much more along the lines of raw ideas on paper. Um, and specifically for a much smaller scope of a game, or more aptly, a level, map, scene, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, it does not need to go into a lot of those hardcore implementation details uh, unless it is absolutely needed. If your game is all about uh, pressing the A button or tapping or swiping all uh, Flappy Bird style, then yeah, you probably want to talk about how the user interacts with it. Um, but for our purposes, it's more about what is uh, the, the scope on, on a much smaller level. Um, if you want to actually see some design document samples, I just linked a couple here. Uh, they are... Uh, for relatively recent games, not really, but it gives you a good idea on the scope that design docs have versus what we're going to be talking about. So, what's actually in a concept? I mentioned paper concept and map layout. Um, paper concept being that written, it's a written brain dump detailing a lot of different sections, um, which include, but definitely not limited to, um, like where is it that we're talking about, the location. Uh, what time is it? The time of day that's going on in this location. This is specifically for like maps or an area. So player plops in, uh, starts the game. Where are they? When are they? Uh, time of day is it? Morning is it? Night is it? Uh, just the the bare moments before the sun sets. Uh, about the location, where? Uh, how is this location used? Um, is it a uh, woodworking factory? Is, is, is it an active woodworking factory? Is it an active, like, robot assassin laboratory? Uh, who or what lives or works there? Is this a populated uh, city location? Is it on the outskirts of town? Uh, is it in the middle of the forest? Are there people in the middle of the forest? Or are there just animals? What kind of animals? Uh, what kind of people are living here? Um, getting into as much depth as possible. Um, and along those same lines, what's the history of the place? Uh, is this location uh, relatively recent, so it's a new construction? So you have a brand new factory out in the middle of nowhere or on an asteroid or uh, inside of a city? Do you ha Is this an old location that's abandoned? Is it somewhere in between? Is it like uh, Warhammer 40K style where you have uh, an ancient manufactorium that has stood the test of time for, for centuries, thousands or millennia uh, of time, but it is still in active use today, but not everyone fully understands how it works. Um, getting into the in-depth details of what makes this location is really going to bring out what it means for this paper concept later on and how useful it is. Um, 
also uh, included is things like concept art, inspirational images, going out to Google Images and saying, oh, I need to make a, uh, uh, a robot warehouse. Okay, well, let me just Google search for a robot warehouse. Okay, some weird, cool images from, from, uh, from Google. Yeah, drop them in. Serve as inspir Those will serve as inspiration for later on. Um, now, these are just like some samples of what you can include. Definitely not all-encompassing if you want to include a full section on characters. So here's Jimmy the Woodworker for your environment, um, and you want to get into a lot of detail about this character, please, that stuff deserves to be in here. If there's a legendary artifact, the sword, like the, the Hyrulean sword going on in here, you want to go into detail about what this is, what's going on, where did it come from, how did it get here? All of this information needs to be put in this paper concept. Um, and this should serve as the beginnings of like inspiration for later on. Um, it is a pure brain dump. You have an idea and you just want to dump it out on paper. Um, uh, we have a, I have a, uh, an example of this later on at the near the end of the session today that we can take a look at. Um, map layout, moving on from this paper concept idea, is the map layout. The map layout itself is you take the paper concept and then, you know, draw it out. Now, we're not talking make this in the editor. If you're using Unity, then don't make this in Unity. If you're using UDK, don't make it in UDK. You're actually using graph paper to draw this out. You're not, uh, you're not creating a finished product here. These are very much brainstorm and, uh, like I said, inspirational ideas. You want to graph out uh, where this is. Um, you want to uh, take your paper concept that you wrote before and start actually making the blueprints that you're going to be using later on. Uh, you need to make sure that when you're drawing it out, it's to scale. Uh, it's not going to help you very much if, oh, yeah, this little dot, that's a giant skyscraper, or that's a little fountain and everything else is wildly out of proportion. You need This is going to serve as your blueprints for later on, so it needs to be to scale. You need to have enough detail in it that uh, will make it useful. Uh, specifically, there's three different detail versions that we're going to be talking about later on. We have low, medium, and high. Um, and like I said, you rarely, if ever, use the actual game editor to lay these out. You want to feel comfortable drawing these out by hand. Because uh, you never know where you're going to be when inspiration strikes. You're out at a restaurant, uh, having a few drinks with friends, and go, oh, this would be an amazing idea for a game. Here, let me draw out something really quick. And with a pen on the back of a napkin and whatever you have available, you draw it out. And the skills you learn making these uh paper versions will definitely come in handy at that time. So, next. Um, so you have the concept fix. We're going to have some samples of these at the end. Uh, so you created a concept. Let's assume this. So you had this initial idea. You've moved forward. You've put it down on paper. You've dumped it out. What comes next? Prototypes. You don't just immediately leap off and go, okay, let's assemble the team, let's get everything together, and start running and gunning it out trying to release a game. No, you need to sit down and say, okay, here's the idea I had on paper. Is this actually going to be fun? Because it's a game. We're not talking about a movie here. We're not talking about a TV series. We're talking about a game. And the underlying thing about a game is does the player actually have fun playing the game? Now, fun could be subjective. Uh, Dear Esther is fun and interactive in its own unique way. But the first thing you need to do is actually test out to see, can I play this game? And is this core mechanic, the core concept of this game, going to be entertaining enough for us to continue? Um, that's kind of built in the... So that initial thing is called a prototype. That prototype uses things like uh, an initial gray box layout. 
You hear that a lot if you just do like Google searches for like gray box, uh, cube, things like that. You'll find prototypes for various games. The gray box layout is an incredibly low detail, rough approximation of your map. So you drew your map layout from before, and now you're building out this bare bones skeleton of a level, of a scene, of a map. Um, there are no textures, default stuff going on. In Unity, everything's gray. It's gray box layout. In UDK, you get that blue and gray checkerboard. Um, you don't worry about making it look good. Uh, you're worrying about, okay, can I just rough out what I drew on my map layout? Um, you put in the bare minimum amount of light so you can just see what's going on. After you get that initial gray box layout, you need to add in those bare features that make your game playable. If your game is about jumping, well, you should probably make your player jump. If your game is about opening doors, well, you should probably put in doors that open. Um, you put in those basic features that allow you to just run through your game in a simplified, easy-to-create way. Once you have those in, it's like Cube Man running around Cube World with his cube machine gun shooting red cube people. Um, then you do the most important feature, which is playing the game. You get to play it. And from there, you need to be very critical. It's, is it fun? Do other people have fun while they play it? What about this is actually fun, and what about it is eh, not so fun? What is this core gameplay mechanic that I'm trying to show off? Um, and from there, you can begin uh, actually understanding what type of game you want to make. You had an idea. You tried to write down that idea, draw out what it means to be this game. But this is the first time the, the game is actually crawling on its own. You have something that is a very rough approximation of what you thought of. Is it actually what you thought of? You check it out. You, you uh, use whatever you have at your disposal um, and begin playing it. If it's not fun, then you go back and remake, rewrite it, rewrite some of your paper concept, rework your level, your map layout, uh, build a new prototype, try again. Is that one fun? Ooh, I made some improvements here. Maybe if I go back, make it, uh, tweak it again, everything will be better. Uh, if you're making a platformer and it's really fun to jump around, but the la map layout that you drew is a wide open field, you probably aren't going to have as much fun playing testing it. So you need to go back to the map layout, draw something maybe with some more dif differentiated elevations, some platforms for you to jump on, go back in, uh, play test it. Oh, definitely, much more fun. Uh, and that way you can see how it works. Um, as a really good example of this, if you have seen uh, or played Bioshock Infinite, at all, there's a YouTube video of the actual prototype that the developers used to prove that the core gameplay functionality of Bioshock Infinite was fun. Um, and I don't know if this is actually going to play. Let's let's try it. Here we go. Isn't that cute? So you can kind of see what's going on. We have this gray and white checkerboard world. He has some basic. Uh, shooting of a rocket going on. They hooked up an Xbox controller since that was their primary development environment. And what's most important is you have this riding on rails mechanic. When Bioshock Infinite was first being shown, they really wanted to see is this game going to be fun when the core gameplay mechanic is riding around on these little rails with a hook and shooting people from it, jumping from rail to rail, they move in different directions um, at different speeds, what's going on? Is this actually going to be entertaining for players? So they made basic geometry. Notice there's no textures in here except for the bare minimum to describe what's going on. Um, they built a basic level. They demoed it to the company, and it was pretty obvious from there running through. It's like, yes, this is something that could be fun. This is something we could enjoy. Uh, and it makes an amazing starting point for the next steps.
for actually moving on to production, which is where we go there. Um, before we leap into production that much, uh, I want to remind people, uh, if you're watching, you can actually ask questions somehow. Uh, there's like a Q&A little appy thing. So you can, you can ask questions in here, and I will try and answer them. Um, so in production, you, uh, you had the game idea. You created the paper concept. You wrote out uh, all of like, your brain dump of ideas. You designed a map layout on graph paper. You decided where everything was going to go. And then, most importantly, you just finished your prototype. Yes, it is fun. This is an interesting idea. I like it. People play it. They're interested in what's going on. Now we can actually set out and start making the full game. Um, we want to split out production into its key components. We don't just go, okay, we have a prototype. Let's finish it. Yay, release. No, you need to split out this whole concept, uh, this whole large idea of production into separate sections when you're designing this game. Um, what is the finalized layout? Of it, where is everything going to go? Where are uh, the bookshelves? Where are the walls? What's the shape of this room? All of these details need to be locked down, mostly before you move on to well, what's the textures going to be? Actually, setting out and putting the textures in this level. Is it going to be rock? Is it going to be metal? Does it need to be concrete? How is it going to set out? Um, after you're done with the textures, you move on to meshes. You place your rock. You place your rocks in the level. You place the chairs, the tables. All of these different elements need to be uh, placed into your level. But you will you'll have less of an idea on where these need to go and how they'll fit into the room if you don't finalize the layout before that or the textures. Uh, after you get your initial layout, your textures all set, your meshes all set. Now you can set in and say, okay. Here's where all those interactive bits need to go. This is where the health dispenser needs to go. This is where the carnival or the circus of value needs to go. Because when you're laying out these these elements, uh, you won't know exactly well where's the player going to go. Where do I need the player to go? Uh, unless you've already laid out where the rest of the meshes are. Where is the pillar? Where um, what kind of walls or floors? Um, are going to be highlighted because of the textures that I'm using. What's the actual shape of the room? Then I can actually lay out, okay, here's where a door needs to be. Here's where a weapon pickup needs to be. Once all of these items are put in, then you can start focusing on sounds. Where, well, I put in like a cracked window underwater, I probably need dripping water sounds. Uh, I need to put in uh, the door opening closings. I need to put in the ambient noise from a fan that's spinning over here. Uh, I put in a static computer bank. I probably need to put some computer bank noises. Um, and then after all that, and kind of, you can do this slightly in conjunction with light, uh, with sounds, you can put in lighting. Uh, lighting is very much one of those last steps. At the end of everything else, then you can light the scene. You don't know how this scene needs to be lit until everything is in it. You can have a general idea. You know that, uh, I'm going to keep using Bioshock because it was a, a good example of this. Um, you know that the scene is going to take place underwater. From your paper concept, you know it's in an underwater city, the power is failing, there's a lot of like decay going on, so you know it's probably going to be darker, it's going to be bluish from the lighting, maybe some green from uh, like moss, mold, decay, stuff going on. You know it's probably going to be like flickering or really dim lights, but you don't know exactly where those lights need to be placed, what intensity to put on them. And all those very precise details that you do need to figure out until all of these, these other things are done. Lighting is like that capstone at the end. Um, production is taking what you did before and moving it and actually implementing what you already designed. Um, production is not really the area to go, oh, I need to redesign everything that I happened. You know, instead of a guy jumping around, it's going to be a guy shooting a machine gun. And, and that will be so much better. Uh, well, 
there's a lot of stuff going on, and by this time you have more people working on it, everyone's getting tasked out to assignments, changing fundamental features about the game probably are not going to go over very well. And they're going to involve a lot of reworking. You need to go back to the paper concept, rewrite it back to your level layouts, do these still work, prototype it again, is it going to be fun? Is this, are we sure this is going to work? Okay, fine, now we can move back to production, reuse the stuff we did, and move on. Um, where you want to do drastic changes is back in prototype. When you hit production, you try to lock it down as much as feasibly possible. You're, you still have wiggle room, and largely that comes into the idea of polishing the game. And importantly with this whole thing, yes, you're making the game, but you're playtesting it. You're not just, okay, we're going we're gonna to put all these pieces together and no one's going to launch it and we just trust it's going to work. No, you need to actually playtest the damn thing. <laughs> Is it still fun? Um, from your prototype, you had a very, you had an idea of whether it was going to be fun or not. You, you tried out the basic concepts, but now that you're actually putting in the textures, putting in the lighting, putting in those interactive elements and the rest of the details, is your core game mechanic still interesting? Is it still enough to hold the player's interest? Is it still fun? If it's not, what went wrong? What's detracting from it? Your prototype was fine. What about now? Um, you need to actually play test it with that critical eye and never stop play testing it. If, this, if the production is too much work for you to do while play testing, then you need to bring on more people to actually help with the play testing. Everyone has friends that love to play test the game. And the hard part is actually getting critical feedback from them. But we'll have other lectures, other things on that later. So, while you're play, play testing, while you're in production, you need to make sure you have an eye for polish. Um, you are play testing it, you're bug testing it, and then you improve it. And then you play test some more and improve that. And then play test some more and improve that. And this keeps going until you feel that you are done or you hit a deadline. There is, there is no hard end point for this. But what is involved in this process is you need to keep an eye out for, well, is this layout working as well as it should? Are these textures working as well as they should? All of those elements in production, are they actually helping the game or are they hurting the game? Could it be better? And not better as in, oh, we need to add a brand new room in here. More along the lines of, can we shift this wall slightly? Can we add a small divider here? Can we swap out these textures? Can we swap out these meshes? Can we add a few more bits of debris? Can we add a few things here, little things here, make some new sounds, make a speaker with some music playing on it? Oh, perfect, changes the whole thing. You need to play test it and play test it again and play test it again. Um, we're not talking about major changes, we're talking about small changes. changes. Um, and from here, uh, you just play test it until you feel you are comfortable uh, with how it has come out. Um, and let me verify. Cool. Um, now, in this whole process, a lot of people who are used to watching... Um, or uh, working in Unity or other, other game engines, um, you're used to just diving in and starting to make something, immediately jumping into that prototype phase. Well, and you may be asking, like, where's the editor in this whole process? Well, it is most of it. Uh, everything but that concept phase. And that's often the most overlooked and important, and one of the most crucial chunks of this whole process, um, getting your idea down on paper. Um, but everywhere else, you're using the editor, you're using the tools necessary to get things done. Um, so, as their example, hey, you know, you got an idea. That's wonderful. It's useless until you write it down. So, 
you need to actually go through the process. You need to transform that game idea via this whole little design process into an actual game. First step, you definitely need to focus on that concept. Um, most people have a pretty good idea on what production is and polishing. Um, they have an okay idea of what, uh, of what prototypes are. Lots of people forget this whole concept step. So uh, some examples of what the concepts are needed. Um, I think very visually. I like using smart art. It's fun. Uh, but you have your initial idea, and you split it out into those paper concept and map layout. Um, like I mentioned before, Paper Concept has all these different sections, not limited to these. Please expand as you see fit, or remove sections if they don't apply. Uh, for map layouts, we have low, medium, and high detail. So let's go over some samples of uh, Paper Concept and map layouts. So sample Paper Concept, we have, oop, back. Paper Concept, I have a little Word doc. Here we go. Um, nothing too extreme. Uh, it's for a small idea concept. Uh, originally, this was for something akin to like a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. But it has a section for like summarizing it all at the top. We have a small section on the location, time of day, when this happened, and then because I'm a really big history buff, and I thought that for this specific game, it needed a lot more in-depth history associated with where this is. Um, it goes into a lot of detail for uh, how this whole story came about. Um, section on the inhabitants of the land, um, of, the, of the section we're in. This happens to be this whole giant underground tomb. Um, and what it's used for. Uh, specifically, there's a demon at the center of this tomb that's using it to raise the undead for a giant army. Oh, awesome. Well, uh, and that's all mentioned in each of these sections in its own way. How does each section feed off of the other? Um, and then some basic Google image, image searches, uh, some things to serve as inspiration for what's going on. Now, this is, this is what I would consider bare minimum for a paper concept. It has the sections, it has text, some basic organization with bullet points, some basic images, bare minimum. If you're actually going to set out and make one of these and make it awesome, then you probably want to sit down and actually fill out location more than a few sentences. Time of day, more than just like a sentence here. Um, you want to fill this out as much as you can to really just brain dump all of your ideas. Um, and you want to customize this to fit the theme. Uh, since this example is a uh, like underground medieval tomb kind of thing, maybe styling this whole page like a pamphlet. I used Word. You can use Adobe InDesign. You can use Illustrator. Whatever you want to get your point across, make it unique to the game that you are designing. Let's go back to this. So that's the paper concept, and it's definitely for those writers out there, you want to get your ideas across. You want to just start dumping ideas. Once you have that concept written down, then we're moving on to the right-hand side, that map layout. Um, and the reason why you do it afterwards is to get is to use the paper concept as the inspiration for the map layout. You can jump between them as you go, and you will jump between them as you go, uh, depending on your how inspired you are by drawing it out. Oh, this would be a cool place for uh, a fountain, and I want that fountain to be important. Well, I probably want to include more about it in the paper concept, and you work back and forth. Um, so. The map layout has these three distinct detail levels, low, medium, high. Now, the low detail, and now let me, let, me, let me preface these. These were all drawn by me and are utterly horrible. So, again, these are bare minimum examples of what would need to get done. So, low detail, ooh, rough sketches. Nasty sketches, uh, but it is on graph paper, and it shows the bare minimum needed for this level. Um, this is a low detail. All we're doing is basic shape. Uh, specifically, this was supposed to be a uh, 
here, let me let me bring up an example. Um, uh, here we go. Uh, this was a the interior of one of these guys, these Osprey aircrafts. So you can see very blocky shapes, taking these as like rough inspiration. Um, wings going off the side, cockpit up here, staircase going down to the cockpit, ladder to a, a, a ball turret around, and then there's a ramp to a gun in the back. Um, but this is the low detail. It's all about primitive shapes, little notes for off-screen things. Uh, you're getting the basic sense of scale from these. And that's why you're including the graph paper. It's all about scale. Um, if this is a stairwell and this is a cockpit, you know your average human being is probably about three, three squares wide in this. Um, if we were to convert that to unity sizes, let's say the this staircase was three units wide, three unity units wide. In UDK, this would probably be closer to 40 or 50 wide, I believe it is, uh, for your average UDK width. Um, so that, that definitely gives you an idea on where to start. That's the whole purpose of low detail. Rough layout, what shape is going on. So medium detail. We start with the low detail and add in stuff. Medium detail is all about those static meshes. Where is everything? So we have crates of supplies, we have some cots laying across the room, some fuel containers bungee corded or wrapped to the wall, weapon rack, ammo and grenades, and then more importantly, here's the two seats in the cockpit. Definitely gives you a much more solid sense of scale. Um, but it also shows you a lot of the flow information. Where is the player going? Um, if the player started off in this cot over here, well, they can go left, they can go right, but they're going to hit this cot hanging across the, the room here, so they probably can't get all the way to the right-hand side with the ammos and grenades and weapon rack. They're going to have to either go up this little ladder to the turrets or to the cockpit. You're, you're actually starting to plan out where the player can go, what they can see, and what they can use. What is actually this environment like? And you want to make sure lots of things are labeled. If I didn't label this supplies, who knows what it is. Um, this wall closet of supplies over above the cot over here, uh, you want to make sure that things are appropriately labeled so that when you go in the editor, you can actually pull models, meshes, textures that are appropriate for it. So medium detail is all about where things are, and you get the flow of the, of the level. Where can the player go? High detail, you take the medium detail, and you add more cultural info. You know, um, I like to add high detail by doing these little pop-outs, these little call-outs. Also, I added, like, more ground texture. And again, I'm, I'm no artist. I'm no amazing uh, uh, illustrator here. If you are, please, by all means, make it better. Um, but this should show that even people without any artistic skill can still get an idea across. So um, in here... You are, taught, you are doing direct pulls from your paper concept. How does the history tie into this location? How is the location used? All of that flavor bits about the culture of the space. Uh, in this example, this uh, plane was used by a, by a set of pirates, like sky pirates. So you have their most recent mission, you have a map of the area, a picture of their target with like a knife through it, they have a vendetta against this guy, a rack of weapons, all ready to rock and roll, and then uh, importantly, this like trophy case of paraphernalia from their previous uh, missions. You have like a bullet hanging out here, some kind of significance. Uh, a child's doll, hmm, that may give you an idea of what happened before. What's important to this person? Probably family is important. Um, or maybe they're a sociopathic maniac who loves to collect trinkets from the people he kills. Um, getting in this information into the world brings life to it. And you are pulling that directly out of your paper concept and you're applying it in visual terms to the map layout when you're in high detail. For a lot of what we do, uh, a lot of, in my class anyway, we jump, we mostly do low and medium, and uh, if the specific project dictates it, we go much more into high 
if you're doing something like, okay, we're testing out environment design. Well, you definitely need to know a lot more about the history of the environment. So, some bad examples. Uh, there we go. It's a bad example. Um, first thing that's wrong, not on graph paper. Well, that's not bad. There are lines. There's information. Well, it's kind of off-center from those lines. Uh, but more importantly, this map has, very, has no sense of scale associated with it. Um, it's hard to tell exactly how big things are, um, where everything is uh, exactly distance-wise. It would be hard to take this and start moving it into a game and actually start making a prototype off of it. Um, it's far too big to actually show that. Um, to, to give you an idea of when I first started making this, uh, this little track thing that flows around, that was supposed to be a full gigantic railroad track. These buildings over here that are partially demolished are supposed to be uh, like 30-story tall skyscrapers. Oh, God, that means this little fountain over here, this distance is probably um, a few, like maybe 100 yards, for crying out loud. That's huge. Um, and it doesn't necessarily... Uh, this makes it feel cramped by drawing it in this small of an environment without any grid lines. Um, when, in fact, this level is absolutely massive. Um, and then I went ahead and added more high-detail stuff to it. This gives you a better sense, but it's even harder to read. This map is too big to be shown in a single single pass. Um, and because of that, I also did this without a paper concept associated with it. And you get some very generic things. Look, it's a skyscraper that's partially built, but all the angles are really rough, harsh stuff going on. Is that good? Is that bad? What's going on? Like, what's the art style here? We got a lot of rivets and metal, but there's not a lot of cultural information going on. Where is it? When is it? Um, we know it's, like, at least modern. <laughs> is it before modern? Is it, is it old? Is it newer? Where, where is this? Um, the only thing that has even the most slightest bit of like real cultural information is up here, and you have these like posters or placard things that are like peeling off the wall. Okay, maybe that implies old or mismanaged, uh, but there really isn't a lot of information going on in here. Uh, so uh, that is the yep that covers our uh, session that's going on. Um, if you have uh, questions and things, please hit me up on my Google Plus or uh, uh, Facebook, whatever you want. Um, and thank you all for listening. <laughs>